Hey class, it's Philip Seagraves. Getting you guys ready for the test. We're going to quickly go over the questions from that sample final 39 and 40 just to make sure you guys are comfortable with those. I think we covered some of this stuff a little bit in class but it should be a little bit more clear as I go through it in this example. So we're going to jump over to the sample final, take a look at those questions and then we will work them from there and I, I think you'll feel a little bit better about these questions afterward. Okay, our first question that we had, somebody asked, was 39. In this case we have a random number 0.57 which is either uh, the dice a 5 and a 7 or we have a random number from a random number from Excel and the test it'll be given to you like this. And we have an observation R from the following discrete probability. Okay, all that means is there's a 30% chance of a 0, 20% chance of a 1, 40% chance of a 2, 10% chance of a 3. So all we have to do to figure out where this 57 would fall, in this case we would just work our way up. Is it less than a 30? Nope. Now we got to add 20 to the next one. So is it less than a 50? Which is the 20 plus the 30? Nope. All right, now we, we left, fifth, left off at 50 here. So we're going to add 40 to that. And we get to 90. Is it less than a 90? But greater than 50? Yes, it is. So our value in this case is going to be a 2. We'll just quickly jump over to the 2. And this last one is the last 10%. If you think these add up to 100, they've got to always add up to 100. And so this last 10%, if you think about it, would be from 90 up to 100. Let's do that. I know you probably don't need this, but we'll quickly just do a, a little bit of example in Excel. You're not going to be using Excel during the test, but this will maybe help explain it a little bit better just to, to a couple of you guys. So we have 0, 1, a 2, and a 3 or our different values. And let's take a look at those numbers again. 30, 20, 40, 10. 30, 20, 40, 10. And 10. And, oh, got a percentage in that one, which is okay. Let's, go, let's make them all percentages. That way it's a little easier to understand, but a point uh, 1, 0.3, 0.2, 0.4 is fine. Now, what we're doing here is as we make our comparison to our random number, we need to kind of add these up. So uh, the first one's just going to be the 30%. The next one would be the 30 plus the 20. And then I'll just drag those down. So we keep going up until we hit one that's higher than our number. Is 30 higher than a number? Nope. Is 50 higher than our number? Nope. Is 90 higher than a number? Yep. So that's the one we want to stick with. And we're going to go over here. Because we know that it's higher than 30, so we're not higher than 50, so we won't be here. So it's going to be between 50 and the maximum. This is the top of our range, this number here. So it's going to be a 2, which again takes us back to the answer to this problem, which is C. Okay, now the next one, 40, a little bit tougher, but I know all of you guys can handle this. In this case, we have machine breakdowns that can either happen on each day, zero breakdowns, one breakdown, or two breakdowns. And these are the probabilities. 60% chance it's not going to break down at all. 30% chance that we'll have one breakdown that day. And a 10% chance that it'll break down twice. This is like the grease filter in the checkers fryer. So it's either going to break down none, 60% chance. In this case, it's not increasing each day like we had in our example in class. It's just the same probabilities every day. Every single, so even if you don't, if it doesn't break down yesterday, you still have these same prob probabilities today. Now in this case we have random numbers that have already been provided and what we'll do is we'll copy these and then we'll jump over to Excel. We have 0, 1, and 2, 60, 30, and 10. We had 60, 30, and 10, whoops, and 10 percent. And I don't need this bottom row. If you remember, those were our probabilities. 60% chance of no breakdowns, 30% chance of 1, and 10% chance of 2. Now, our random numbers I copied into the clipboard. I'm just going to paste them here so we don't have to keep going back and forth. So let's take a look at our random numbers for each one of these. We have a 13, a 10, a 2, an 18, a 31, a 19, 32, 85, and you can just write this out on a on your side of your test or where that uh, question is or on the back of your piece of paper. That'll be fine. 
And then what we're going to do is use these random numbers and come over here to our chart. And kind of the same way we did before, we're going to kind of go down until we bump into one, and that's the one we're going to use in this cumulative column. So at 13, up, oh, okay, it's less than 60. So we have zero breakdowns. Zero breakdowns, zero breakdowns, zero breakdowns, zero breakdowns. We're not going to hit any breakdowns until we get at least over 60. Okay? Zero breakdowns, zero breakdowns. Ah, 85. Okay, is 85 greater than 60? Yep, so we go up here. Is it greater than 90? Nope, so we stay there. So we had one breakdown. Okay, 31. Zero breakdowns again. 94. Okay, we keep going. It's greater than 90. Yep, we go here. It's not greater than 100, so we stay here. All right, two. Two breakdowns. Now, if you remember, our question asked us what proportion of days had at least one breakdown? Well, we've got 10 days here, and we had two days where there were breakdowns. Two days. So that's 20%, or 0.2. So our answer in this case is going to be A, or 0.2. Now, for the moment of truth, let's see what the key said and see if I got it right. All right, 39 and 40. Ah, there we go. C was a 2, and our answer for 40 was 0.2, or A. Looks like I got it right, and you guys can too. Look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Stay tuned for uh, at least one, maybe two more videos covering a couple of those things that we had to breeze through at the end of class. And I look forward again to seeing you guys Tuesday, and have an awesome weekend.